thank God, Hans Zimmer is crying somewhere right now. This is Days of Thunder, released in 1990 for a bunch of different systems, but we're looking at it on DOS. And of course, this emulates the classic NASCAR movie, Days of Thunder, that was released the same year, starring Tom Cruise. Uh, an absolute great movie. And I will say that this is not a great game. It's a pretty interesting game, but uh, man, the music is hard to listen to. And it, <laughs> trying to emulate Hans Zimmer's classic soundtrack, um, but it's really tough to, to get through. Uh, but I promise this is worth a look. And I'm looking at it because it is the very first PC or DOS NASCAR game that I think exists. Uh, I'm sure there's some other stuff out there, potentially. I think there might be an arcade game or console game that came out before this, but for the PC and a bunch of other systems, this was really the first NASCAR game. Uh, and it was developed by Argonaut Software. So they did the DOS version of this game, and Argonaut Software is actually most famous for doing Star Fox, and you'll see some of that in this. It's early 3D technology. 1990, you gotta think, it's coming out uh, not even a year after Indianapolis 500 for the PC. There's not a lot of 3D games, and I think it's actually pretty impressive what they were able to do with it, uh, but all in all, <laughs> it's it's a little bit interesting of a game, something we'll take a quick look through to show everybody what it's about. Now, there's not a lot of details out there about the development of this game, but I can only guess that it was a pretty rushed process, uh, and it was divvied out to a bunch of different developers to develop different versions of this game for different platforms. So you will see, if you go check out the Amiga or the Commodore 64 version of the game or the DOS version that we're looking at here, uh, they all have differences and some of them are wildly different. And there was also an NES version of this game, but looking through notes and things, it sounds like that version didn't originally come out uh, or wasn't released after development, but years later it actually was. And so you might be able to find versions of that floating around. It certainly was never commercially released, uh, but that game itself looks completely different. It, it might as well not even be the same game as the one we're about to see here, but you can tell looking at the main menu here, there's not even a logo on it. Uh, things were definitely hastily put together, but there's still a few interesting things about this. So there's two real modes for playing the game. You have a practice mode where you can just go through and drive around the various tracks, make setup adjustments to your car, which we'll look at. Uh, and then there's a race for the cup mode, which takes you through the five different rounds or so that the game has in it. Uh, and almost arcade style, you have to complete each race to move on to the next one. Uh, and I will try that. We'll try that in a second, but I haven't had great success at it so far. But I thought I'd take a look first at some of the tracks. Some of the other options you do have, you do have a detail option just to make it run better on computers at the time. Control-wise, I'm going to be playing this with the keyboard, uh, but it does support mouse control as well. I wasn't able to figure out if it has joystick control, and I actually cannot find the manual for this game anywhere, which for games from this time period is crucial to find the manual. And I'm, and I'm sure somebody will share the manual with me after posting this video, but wasn't able to find it. I did find an Amiga manual, which helped me figure out a few of the systems and things, uh, but manuals were super important back then. But as far as I can tell, just keyboard control or mouse control and keyboard is much easier. Uh, and then you have your race distance and 10 laps is the minimum. Uh, and you'll see in a second, that feels like an awful long time to race, even 10 laps, but you can go 25, 50 uh, or 100 laps if you want to, if you're a crazy person. I'm sure a lot of people did it back in the day. Uh, but I will we'll go into practice mode here for a second uh, and just show you the track. So uh, the game features, I believe four or five tracks. We'll figure that out in a second. Uh, starting with the Daytona, 500. That's, that's what they call the track. Daytona International Speedway, of course, which is pretty cool to see. You got to remember the Papyrus Sims, which just came out about four years after this, weren't able to have Daytona in them. Uh, Daytona USA with Sega was the thing at that point. So it's pretty cool that the track's included, even if it isn't a very accurate representation of it. Um, they do include things like notes and everything about the tracks. Um, so it's named for the World Center of Racing. Daytona contains 44 acre Lake Lloyd, a man-made lake created to provide the dirt for the 31 degree banks. Everybody knows that story and you can see the big lake there in its time. This would have been very, very exciting to see this type of stuff. Uh, we'll go to the next track. We got Phoenix, which I think is interesting They include. But if you think about Days of Thunder, Phoenix is actually in that movie quite a bit. It seems at least at least the ice cream scene. I think when they're eating ice cream on the pit boxes at Phoenix. So it's a pretty interesting one to put in the game as well. Was a pretty new track in 1990. Uh, NASCAR having raced there for the first time, I think just a couple years earlier. So um, pretty cool one to include. We also got Atlanta, and this of course is the classic Atlanta, the more just regular oval with short straightaways and huge corners. The big A is the only true super speedway oval. 
not sure that's true, but it's a good track nonetheless and fun to have the accurate version from the time, of course. Then we have Talladega, which I cannot tell the difference between Talladega and Daytona, and I'm almost certain there is no difference. We even have a Lake Lloyd here, which is obviously not there at Daytona. But uh, yeah, we have Talladega. It's the biggest and fastest speedway in the cup. Cost $4 million to build, which was impressive in its time. And then we come back to Daytona. So there's just the four tracks, but you know, interesting enough four tracks and certainly at the time no NASCAR games existed. So this was great so that you could actually race a stock car around some of the tracks and you'll see what that looks like in a second. So because I'm not very optimistic about the career mode, I figured I could go out and do a couple practice laps at Atlanta. And when you enter the track, you actually jump into what's called the pit stop mode. And this, in my opinion, is one of the coolest things about the game. There actually is a pit stop mode where you can make different adjustments. And it took me a little bit to figure out what some of these do. And I actually don't know what all of them do yet, but we can see down the left-hand side, we have these different adjustments for the car. And these are the things you can change. Uh, the tires one perplexed me at first, but reading the Amiga manual, I was able to figure it out. This is adjusting your stagger. So you can say if you want, I guess, small staggered left side tires uh, or right sides, and then you know adjust the stagger from there. So how stagger would work, uh, this isn't really the right representation. The tire would be taller rather than wider, but it, I guess, serves the purpose where you probably want skinny tires on the left side, uh, or sorry, not tall tires on the left side, so we can select that. And you'd want the taller tires on the right side so the car just naturally goes to the left. So we'll, we'll see what that's like. I have to assume the bumper here is to fix damage when you have it, uh, replacing the windshield as well. You'll see there's a kind of an interesting damage indicator. Uh, we can do things probably fixing the engine. I uh, have no idea what the steering would do. If we select that, maybe it'll pop up a menu now. Not sure what that does. Oh, here we go. So we can move the bar up and down and change the steering sensitivity. Okay, so this is interesting. So I guess you can go out and practice and see how much sensitivity you need uh, there. Same deal with the brakes as well. Saw this, we can adjust the brake sensitivity. I don't think you should be using the brakes very much at any of these tracks. So probably leaving that on medium is all right. And then lastly, we've got fuel. So you can set your crew to do all those things. We'll see them on the right here work then put new tires on and there we get placed in the car so here we are in the cockpit at atlanta and we'll do a couple practice laps just to show you what the sim or the game is like it's really just a game uh, come out of the pit lane so it is full 3d and i think the cockpit itself is pretty impressive for the time it looks almost photo real or it has that photo real type look to it um I'm already going over 200 miles an hour, apparently. Uh, we'll come around onto the back straightaway here. And I'm just using the arrow keys to control, um, but I'm able to move the car around the track. It's a full 3D track. It's not really driving for you. So, you know, it is something you can actually control. And uh, the banking itself, uh, you can see we don't have a lot of polygons going on for the track. So the car kind of bounces around, but a couple of the reviews I read actually cited that as kind of a cool feature. It felt like the car was moving around as it went through the corners. And for its time, you know, anything like this was pretty realistic looking. Uh, you have to think three. 3D games were such a novel idea, especially something representing real life. So, you know, this where you've got real scenery on the sides of the track, you can see the white and red walls, and I don't know what's actually going on right now. I'm getting damaged somehow. So, yeah, I'm not sure how I got damaged there, but uh, that comes from hitting the the walls hitting other cars, uh, apparently just driving in a straight line. But if that little crack works its way across the whole dash, you're done, uh, essentially. And it can happen faster than you'd think, uh, especially in the race with other cars. Uh, but, you know, if it, it does get a decent way across the uh, the dashboard, you can also go into the pits and make changes and fix things. That's pretty cool that you can do that. But apparently, the pit stops themselves are timed. And you might have seen when I was in there, we'll see it again, but you might have seen the little counter counting up. So uh, you do have to do things kind of quickly and make decisions and then get the car back out uh and i guess if you're doing one of those 100 lap races here that will uh be interesting for you to try to do the right pit stop strategy and all that um so i'll come around we'll try to get into the pits this time uh but overall i mean it doesn't look exactly like atlanta uh but it also doesn't look not like atlanta so <laughs> it's somewhere in the middle uh, but we'll come through turn four here bouncing through the turns at apparently 210, 11 miles an hour. Ooh, there we go. Come out, just clip the grass there, and I can kind of see a pit crew guy ahead. I'll try to stop somewhere he raises a board. Ooh, 
car just slid to the right there automatically and he fell down. All right, so you got your pit stop settings and everything, so you can change the tires, uh, fix the damage and all of that. Uh, and of course, fuel up, oil and fuel level. I'm not really sure what, what the oil level does and how that would change things. Uh, hopefully you wouldn't be changing oil half, halfway through a race, but you can add fuel to the car as well uh, and move on. But we'll back out from qualifying or the practicing anyway, and we'll try to do a race for the cup. And so, like I said, this is gonna take us through the different tracks. We're gonna start here with Daytona International speedway um, and do our mini Daytona 500 10 lap race if we get to it. We'll enter the track. We're at the pits. Now we're going to be doing qualifying and from what I could figure out, uh, we'll do three laps and I don't know why three laps, uh, but we'll try to get the best time that we possibly can. And for this, maybe I'll put on do the medium stagger tires. I have no idea what tires would be quickest. It'll be the stuff you'd want to figure out. But we'll have the guys put the tires on, and then we'll enter the track. So we're at Daytona now, and um, yeah, Daytona never had the red and white walls. But otherwise, it looks different than Atlanta, so we can give them that. But I'm almost certain Talladega is exactly the same here as Daytona. But we'll come out of the pits uh, right up to 200 miles an hour. Takes no time at all. And uh, we'll come around the turns and do our qualifying session. All right, so we'll come towards the line to start the first lap, and the dog leg here is a little more like a Charlotte or something, flat and with two little bends in it, but we'll start our first qualifying lap. Uh, I've done this a couple times, and it's been pretty easy to qualify on the pole, so anticipating much of the same thing, but we'll come out down the back straight away. Like I have the grandstands on the back stretch and everything, you kind of see Lake Lloyd to the left there uh, when you turn certain ways. There are also billboards on the grass, which would not be a good idea. We'll come into turns three and four. And for 1990, again, I think all I really have to compare it to would be Indianapolis 500, and that, that is just much more accurate all around obviously and that's trying to be a simulator this really isn't and so i think for an arcade game or a semi-realistic you know simcade type game uh has to be what they were going for here but it's pretty cool i think this would have been a lot of fun in 1990 especially after coming out of the theater and seeing days of thunder and wanting to recreate it yourself uh this was the perfect pairing for that and that's probably what the publishers wanted in developing a game for Days of Thunder. We'll sell a bunch of copies because everybody's all hyped up on NASCAR. Uh, but, you know, not the best game in the world. We'll come out of the turn, though, completing the second lap. Again, I don't know why there's three laps. I don't think NASCAR qualifying has ever had three timed laps. We got 42.26 for a lap there. It's not a lot you can do to influence the lap time. You know, I guess you'd have to play around with some of the garage settings if there's anything that could speed the car up. But pretty much just flat out the whole way around the track and just touching the left arrow key to get the car to turn here and there. And then the right key whoo, on the straightaway to get it back towards the wall or something. But otherwise, there's not a lot you're doing, which could be a good or a bad thing. All right, we'll come out of turn four then, head towards the line, complete the qualifying, see where we qualify. And there we go, we have qualified for position one. So now we get to try to do a race, and I'm hoping this works out well. We've done a couple attempts at it, and uh, a few of those have ended <laughs> ended very quickly. Um, a big part of this is avoiding the other cars, and from everything I can tell, there is no way to get an actual rear view mirror. You just have the rear view mirror with the uh, little driver helmet in it off to the left. And uh, you can't actually see what's coming up behind you, but we'll try our best here. All right, we get the starting lineup. So Cole Trickle on the pole, that's us. With the 4192, we actually get to play as Cole Trickle. Rowdy Burns, his rival in second. Uh, Dick Thornton in third. Of course, the rest of the drivers <laughs> are mostly fake. I'm not sure if they're all in the movie. I know Russ Wheeler is, who's in fifth place, but Dick Thornton, Rusty McFarlane, Al Haney, Bob Bonahan, and Hank Martin. Not sure if those guys are in the movie. I'll have to check it out again. All right, and we'll pick what we need for the race. I guess we'll just do the medium stagger tire since that worked out well for me in qualifying. We're good on fuel and everything, so we'll get the guys to work here. All right, so here we are on the pace lap, actually. And it started me on the back straightaway here. I didn't cut anything, but uh, we are right side by side with another car. You'll actually see the position on my dashboard change back and forth. And uh, this has been the hardest part so far is starting the race. Now I'm flat throttle right now, trying to just <laughs> get the car to the line, but I can't go faster than, than 99 miles an hour. So it's slowing me down a little bit, but we'll come out of the 
fourth corner and head towards the start. Hopefully get away cleanly. It hasn't worked out so well for me on many attempts. So here we come to the line. It's flat right now. And what I've had in the past is all the cars overtake. Oh, I got hit. There we go. Hit again. Oh, but I made it on the straightaway a little bit here. So we'll work down towards the first corner. Oh, okay. So I got just run over from behind. There must be some ways to go faster right off the line. I'm not sure, but I was not able to do it. We've already got cars in front cutting the grass. And you also feel like you're in a Mack truck. I'm about double as high up <laughs> as all the other cars are. We'll work towards the inside of one coming up behind a car which looks suspiciously like the Tide car, which I don't think was a car in 1990. Ooh, we got a car stopped there at the bottom of the track. Work on the high side of him. Yeah, but this is Days of Thunder, so <laughs> I think for its time, a lot of fun. Oh, almost hit the car in front. Ooh, I hit the wall. Oh, no, no, no. There's a car hitting me. And you get to watch a burning effigy of your car. It happens so quick like that, that all the AI just run over you and there's nothing you can do. All right, so we're gonna try this again and <laughs> basically have to redo everything. I had to go back through and qualify and all of that, but we're back on the pole on the pace lap. See if I can get away. It's the cars just from behind just run you over sometimes or pretty much always. Uh, and off the starting line is one of the most difficult times, but we'll come through the fourth corner. We'll get right down to the bottom of the track and see if maybe they'll just go around me to start. I don't know, but green flag should come out here. All right, there we go, across the line. Oh, cars go to the outside. See, and I got hit there. And already a little bit of damage, but worked ourselves away from the line. Once again, a few cars in front will come on the low side of this red car. Hopefully get around him all right. Now, if you had a mirror, it would be a little easier, but the cars jump around so much and everything too. It's very difficult to see where you're going, but oh, I'm making a pass on second there. We'll come up and take the lead at the Daytona 500, I think. Oh, there's a car still on the low side. I don't know if he's still there or not. We'll just try to stay ambiguously high or as close to the wall as we can as we sink into the track. It's a little odd with the 3D. <laughs> it's very odd with the 3D, but really early on in 3D games. So there's not a lot you can expect. And uh, I can see, you know, Star Fox is obviously way nicer than this, but you can see the same polygonal type graphics that were uh, from the time and Argonaut software was working on the same tech that they ended up using in Star Fox in this, which is kind of a cool tie, since that's such a legendary game. But first there was Days of Thunder. All right, so we're in first and uh, only on lap two of 10. <laughs> this is where I don't know how you would do a full race. Uh, something else I don't know is what all the gauges on the dash do. And I'm sure one of those is fuel. And if I had the manual, maybe that would tell me, but I feel like at some point I am gonna run out of fuel and need to make a pit stop. Uh, so we'll see how this works out. Now, typically it would be the gauge all the way on the left side, which is your fuel. I'm just trying to see if that's ticking down maybe slowly to indicate loss of fuel, but we're finishing lap three here, come across the line again, easily in the lead. All right, so the gauge on the left is going down slowly and I feel like I have no idea where the bottom would be. <laughs> But we're just rocking around Daytona. Maybe at lap five we should pit, since that would be halfway anyway. And I feel like I see uh, it's probably just the pace car on the pit lane. Oh, if I pit, will I ruin my chance to win the race? Or do I need to pit to actually finish? Maybe we'll do it. We'll try to do it quick, just to see what it's like. All right, so we'll come through turns three, four. And I got to make sure that I slow the car down enough and that I can get through all the pitch selections quick enough. We'll hit, hit the brakes a little bit there. Where's the pit entry? Here it is. All right, we'll come down the pit lane. Try to spot our guy. Here he is. The pit lane is one car wide, so if anybody else tries to pit. Oh, I stopped early. No, my car bl blasts by. I'm in fifth place now. Oh, my pit crew guy dove there. What's going on? I have run out of fuel. No! <laughs> just rolling backwards on the grass. I can't accelerate anymore. But we'll just turn the car and try to get it off the racing surface. Oh, we're blessed with the Hans Zimmer theme again. <laughs> All right, well, two different ways to end the same race. Looks like Dick Thornton came out with the win from Al Haney. Rowney Burns in third 
Rusty McFarland, Hank Martin, Russ Wheeler, Bob Bonahan, and Cole Trickle. 20 points. So I picked up points for something. They actually have a point system in this thing. Oh, but we'll get to round two. Okay, so we're able to actually continue even though I ran out of fuel. So we'll get a look at Phoenix here. This is great. All right, so Phoenix is a bit more of a narrow or tighter circuit. So I will go up on stagger on the right side and see how that works out for me. All right, so we're going down the back straight away. I don't know if you've ever gone 215 miles an hour at Phoenix, but I sure am right now. Come through the dog leg there, head to turn three. It feels like I'm going very fast and very slow all at the same time. I think the wall, the walls are massive <laughs> for some reason. We'll come around. It definitely looks different than Daytona did, so it's got that going for it. Come across a very early start finish line there and start our first of three qualifying laps, throw it into turn one. Yeah, and it is a triangle shaped track, but <laughs> it could fool me for Pocono as well, I guess, with how big it is. Come out of turn two there, get up for the dog leg again. Oh, I got damaged somehow. I must have turned too hard. All right, we'll come out of turn four, try to spot the line there, complete the first lap. It did 42 seconds on that. I got two more laps to try to better it. But once again, this is pretty much just flat out. There's no uh, no need to lift or brake, so <laughs> the brake sensitivity, not necessary right now. All right, second lap coming to the line. 40, 42 flat, I thought it was gonna be a 41. It, just for the heck of it, I tried not turning in the turn, and you almost can make it through the corner without turning. The car guides itself almost, but you have to just suggest the way you want it to go a little bit. So, um, not a difficult game, but certainly missing the other cars is the trick here. We'll come through three and four for the qu final qualifying lap. No idea if this is going to be any quicker. Oh, I got more damage. What did I do? Maybe I hit one of those signs somehow. Come out of the corner. Ah, another 42 but I still qualified in the pole, so we are Cole Trickle, the best NASCAR driver. On the pole once again with Dick Thornton behind me. This time he's leading the points now, so <laughs> we have to watch out for him. Al Haney, Rowdy Burns, and so on. All right, so for the, for the race, I feel like that was fine with tires. I have no idea. We'll have the guys bolt those on and go for it, though. All right, so I think I'm coming into turn three and four. Not actually sure where I am on the track. We'll see here in a second. Hopefully this is a little bit easier to get away from the line than it was at Daytona. Yeah, we're coming out of four now, so it'll go green. I think right when I hit the line is when I'll start accelerating and uh, just cross my fingers that I don't get run over again here. Oh, already. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Oh, on the pits. My God, I'm like stuck in the wall or something. <laughs> Oh, able to get out from it. Down the pit lane. All right, so the car's almost fully broken at this stage. And uh, all I did was try to accelerate from the lead, but we're on the track now, and the question is, do I try to pit to fix damage? Maybe you should try to go a couple laps first and at least catch up to the cars and then pit. Oh, no! Once again, the car self-destructed. What did I hit? Nobody knows. But Cole Trickle, 20 points still in the race cup standings all the way at the bottom. I don't know what I actually hit. That's so frustrating. Ah, uh, but that's it for the career mode. So I guess to determine this time, we weren't going to continue because we wrecked the car. I do want to take a quick look, though, before I wrap up here at the last track that we didn't get to look at, Talladega, because I'm interested to see if it's exactly like Daytona. All right, so we'll roll out of the pits, and yeah, it's looking a lot like Daytona already, but we'll come out and see if it's any bigger, maybe? Maybe they scaled it up slightly? I don't know. Looks a lot, awful lot like it. Come around to the back straight away. I'm thinking it's exactly the same, which is a shame, but I don't really blame them. The tracks in this detail are very similar anyway. So, Days of Thunder here. Like I said at the very beginning, this isn't a great game, and I don't think I was anticipating that it would be great. Uh, but, oh, the front straightaway grandstand is a little bit different, so it is a totally new track. And the game froze, I think. 
sometimes these things tell you when they're over. But yeah, that's Days of Thunder. Pretty interesting game for its time. I think, like always with these games, you have to contextualize yourself to what things would have been like in 1990. And 3D graphics were not the norm. Not, not anywhere close to the norm. And they still weren't for many years afterwards. So uh, to see... This at the time would have been quite cool, especially after walking out of the theater, uh, seeing Days of Thunder. This would have been the perfect game to lay back and uh, pretend like you're cold trickle. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, more weird stuff coming up, I'm sure. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.